All right, welcome into TechSags Rewind. Is this your first appearance? This is my first. Be gentle. Well, of course, my <laughs> friend. Andrew Monaco, the voice of the Aggies, with us. We had him on the show. What was your favorite part of the show? Being with you. See, you're always nice. Yeah, I appreciate that. Yeah. What, uh, so I'm going to let you guys know what happens here. A little inside baseball. Uh, Nick just came in here a moment ago, mm -hmm. picked your brain about yeah. uh, broadcasting, and you gave some great advice. And I just want you to kind of, in 10 seconds or less, say what you were thinking. Like, you tackle your job no matter what, same way. Win or loss, you have a certain um, standard that you live up to. Bingo, that's exactly it. No matter what you're doing, you can't control what happens on the field, but that's the most important thing. It's not about the booth. It's about the student athletes on the field, on the court, uh, anywhere. So you prepare the same way. You can't control wins and losses, but you can control how you prepare, the stories that you tell, uh, what, what you are ready to do. So three and six. 9-0, and oh, wouldn't matter. The preparation has to stay the same. Yeah, and that's exactly the truth. All right, on the show, we had the voice on the show. Uh, we had Logan Lee talking a little A&M basketball. Buzz and company uh, looking really good to start it off. John Harris was on here with his scouting report. And the Go Hour, the latest college football playoff rankings. We had that and more. It is Texas Rewind. I think they're, I think they're pretty much legitimate. Um, you know, you go by the, the records, and Georgia should be number one. Now, the only thing is, I would say – Based on what I've seen from the performances, I would flip Michigan and Ohio State. Yeah. Put Michigan two, Ohio State three, TCU four, undefeated. They belong there. Tennessee should be five. Yeah, they have a loss, but, but it was to the number one team, and they have some big wins. So let's just use these four right here, and, and, and Tennessee is five, right? Ohio State and Michigan are going to play. One of those two teams loses, mm -hmm. obviously. So depending on how close – like. What would it take, you think, if everything stays the same other than that, for Tennessee to be one of those four? Well, I know what it should take. It should take um, just one, whoever loses that Michigan-Ohio State game to lose. So Tennessee should move into four as soon as that – as long as Tennessee doesn't doesn't lose. Well, I don't think they will. I think they got – what they got? They got Texas, Baylor, and one more. No, right? you said TCU. Oh, sorry. So, Tennessee, yeah. Tennessee has like – Vanderbilt left. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're, and, they're, know, they're, they're fine. They're going to be undefeated. Sorry. So they're, they're going to be eleven and one. And if let's say Ohio State is eleven and one, well, Ohio State their big win is over Penn State, which is fourteenth, and they've beaten Notre Dame, which is currently I think twentieth. Yeah, twentieth. And uh, and Tennessee will have lost to the number one team on the road with a win over a blowout win over number seven LSU yep. and a win over number nine Alabama well advantage Tennessee yep. right I mean yep and if it's Michigan well Michigan's big win is over Penn State so I, I just don't and they're not going to get a big boost the Big Ten champion which I assume is going to be one of those right uh in the uh Big Ten championship game because we saw Illinois, who's probably going to win the West because the West is so terrible. You know, they, they got run by Michigan State, which yeah. is like fifth in the East last week. So Connor Wegman should be the guy the rest of the way. Hopefully no more flu, no more yada, yada, yada. That gives you hope, right? I mean, the defense has their issues. But at least from an offensive perspective, having uh, that guy, number 15, leading the way should give you a hope against LSU uh, and, and obviously this weekend against Auburn. Yeah, it should. Absolutely. I mean, I, I don't think there's any question in that. Um, and I, I hope that people won't lose hope if he doesn't um, play at a level that everybody is now expecting. Like, oh, we expect what we, he gave us against Ole Miss to be there every single time. This guy is still learning how to play college football. But he does give, he does give you hope. Um, but these are pretty difficult defenses that he's going to face. He's going to see some edge rushers in these next – few games against Auburn and LSU, you know, Derek Hall over at, at Auburn. Uh, also, Colby Wooden, the guy inside-outside, you know, Harold Perkins for LSU. I mean, there are going to be some dudes on the field that are going to make life miserable for him. So we have to temper our expectations in some sense. But here's the other thing, and we, I say this to people here. It's okay to have hope. It's all right. You can have hope. You don't have to always be like, well, we're going to lose. We can't. No, you can have hope. You can find hope in the smallest thing if you want. Um, and that's okay because I feel like the Texans will get it turned around in another couple of drafts, and it might take a little while. But I think A&M is moving in the right direction because the first place you got to start is talent. You got talent, you're going to have hope. And you have talent, so there should be hope. 
But now you just got to get, instead of having all the puzzle pieces all, all over the table, now the p- puzzle pieces are going to start coming together. And that's on Jimbo to be able to do that. I am very, I am very excited about this team. Let's put it that way. A year ago, how excited were you when a lot of people were excited at this point? Uh, I wasn't very excited. Exactly. That's my point. <laughs> I wasn't. I, I was. I was trying to be excited because it was a new year and there were just too many unknowns mm-hmm. last year. At this point, we always talked about the possibilities and the potential of of what that team could be and. I thought they grew into it well. They they did a great job in non conference last season, and then uh, they they had that skid during conference. But then they they battled back and they did well. This year, I don't see a skid happening. I, I see them rolling through and getting better. Now, they're not going to go undefeated. No, they're, they're, they're really good teams in the SEC. They're they're going they're going to lose some games. Um, Just not eight I, in a row, please. <laughs> I man, I don't. I really it baffles me how they lost eight in a row. It's hard to lose eight games in a row and then bounce back the way they did. There was a point I wasn't sure they're going to win again. <laughs> like, I really thought to myself, like, I don't see a win on their schedule. You know, actually, we, we talked about it, and I don't know if we talked about it on air, but it was one of those, if they don't win this game, they could lose the next ten. They got to eight. And they got to eight. <laughs> <laughs> like, they, and they, they, they got to eight. They tried really hard to, to make that come to fruition. And but they, Wait, and if I remember correctly, they won one. Then they lost the next one, and then they went on their run. Yeah, was it Vandy that they lost to? I think. I don't. It doesn't matter. But the bottom line is, you are excited because the retention, the guys coming back, mm-hmm. and the new guys that they brought on. They have they have a t- uh, they have a roster that that Buzz likes. Uh, this is this is a a Buzz Williams roster. Uh, they're long, they're athletic. I think. The majority of them are defensive minded. Yep. But then they can score. I mean, you, you you saw even in the exhibition against Baylor, they're scoring over seventy points. Uh you go to the or the scrimmage against Baylor, the exhibition um against Kingsville, they're blowing blowing the lids off. Their season opener, they're almost at ninety points. And this is with basic bland offensive principles. This isn't Hey, they're they're a fine tuned machine right now. Yeah, they're just they're heck. Buzz is still doing full line changes. He he hasn't even gotten out of that yet. Like, when you go up against other teams, non conference or SEC, that's going to have that experience. Imagine if they didn't have this depth, where they would be. Well, that that's what leads me to the excitement. But I also want to see it translate to these last three weeks. And while I hundred percent agree with you, it's just. It's not what we expected. No, it's, it's not. not good enough. Mm-mm. And no. even with all the things you've said, I think what makes it even more frustrating is how winnable those games right. have been. Right. And it, losing for different reasons the last couple of weeks. The, 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 no, I know why they, they're, not, they're not stopping the run. like They weren't stopping the run before, but now why it's so bad, even worse. But not stopping the run. False starts, random penalties, right. targeting. Like There's just... Different ways, special teams breakdowns. There's just every week something. Right. So if, and Jimbo always says this, the inches and the crumbs. And I thought, okay, one of those, some of those inches, some of those crumbs was scoring in the last possession before halftime against Florida to take the lead. So then you come out, I call it the boomerang, but you get the first possession of the third quarter with all that momentum and you gave it right back to Florida. So you went right back into what you were doing leaving those plays on the field. Yes, that has to change if you're going to get a win. I, I totally get that. But, and again, what is it? Ignore everything except what you say. After. Practices are completely different. There's a different tempo. There's a different feeling. There's a different, they're, they're not wasting time out there in that preparation. But it has to translate to Saturday, and you, and you have to find those inches. And, and you have to do something. You can't do the same thing and expect a different result. So something has to change this Saturday at Auburn to get that result that you want or the different result than what we've seen the last couple of weeks. As close as you are. Uh- do you sense that there is buy-in from the young oh, players? Absolutely. That, that, like, because when I've got these guys here in studio to talk to them, I feel like there is like, look, don't worry as much. Like, yeah, I, I, is that the sense you get? Yeah, it is, and I really, I think there is that cohesion. I think this group that came in is is that group that really thinks they can do 
something special together. If, if you watched um, against Ole Miss, and, it, and it's not just, okay, this group of freshmen and everybody else. I, it, I think I told you the story that in, in Connor's start, Max Wright was talking to Dave Elmendorf and me after the walkthrough on Friday saying, hey, I'm going to make sure that he's comfortable. He goes, if, if you see me run uh, in motion and I kind of lean towards Connor, I'm, I'm saying something to keep him loose. We're going to, mm-hmm. but they've done that with every quarterback. All right. How often do you watch YouTube videos? You can be honest. Uh, it, it depends on the rabbit hole. Okay. <laughs> what do people do at the end of YouTube video? What are you supposed to do after a YouTube video? I'm not sure I ever make it to the end of well, a YouTube video. Actually, what I do is I kind of look up me okay. and see what video was on there for me. Okay. Well, I was going to say what you're supposed to do is you're supposed to ask the audience to like. Yeah. Comment. Yeah. Subscribe. Right. You would like the people to do that, right? Yes. Can you tell them what to do? Like, download, subscribe. I like that. See, that's the voice. I'm David. We'll see you next time.